everyone, and welcome to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this Baptism of the Lord Sunday. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of our staff and everyone helping to lead worship today, we are so glad that you have chosen to join with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for online worship. It is a special Sunday, Baptism of the Lord. We're gonna be doing some uh, wonderful prayers with water and with paper and in pens. Uh, we sent out information about this in the e-news, but if you haven't gathered those things together, we encourage you to get a bowl of water that you can work with, and then to get a piece of paper, maybe something about this size, and a pen with you uh, that you can use those later on during worship. And if you downloaded the paper dove out of the e-news, you could have that instead if you'd rather to be able to use in worship. But uh, that should be a fun time for everyone, no matter your age. And if you don't have any of those things, you don't need them, you'll be able to participate as well. So uh, again, we're really glad that you're here. We hope that you will fill out the contact form. It is pinned right in the comment section. There's a place there for everyone to put their contact information so that we can connect with you, that we can get to know you better and be able to help you engage in ministry and worship and small groups and all of those things. There's a place there on that contact form for you to put your prayer requests that go right to our pastor and to our prayer team. Please use that, uh, that form and that place there for those prayer requests. We love to pray with you. That's a great way to do that. Now, when we gather for online worship, of course, we promise that we are going to participate and be a blessing when we get together in this way. So when uh, we promise to be to participate, that means that we're going to participate. When it's time to pray, go ahead and pray. When we're singing, sing. Uh, when it's time to focus in, make sure that you're focusing in. You may want to uh, put aside other distractions, close other devices, maybe light a candle to help you focus in, but really fully go ahead and participate in what's going on in worship. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way that we comment in the comment section, that all of that is a blessing. The way that we are with the people in our household as we're worshiping, whoever we're with, that we're a blessing. With the people online, with our community at large, that all of it will be a blessing to everyone that is involved. When we get together, of course, we share the peace and love of Jesus Christ. And sharing this peace and love seems so incredibly important, especially this week. It's a way that we can show that we are connected one with each other, that we love Jesus, that we love each other, and that we promise to do all of that with peace and love. So I encourage you to do that now by saying the peace of Christ be with you. And uh, you can respond and also with you, with the people you're gathered with, with the folks online in the comment section, with me. Peace be with you and also with you. And we're going to be led in this by some special folks in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Hi, my name's Diana Trost. I'm on the missions team for the garden, and I'm also in United Methodist Women in Peace be with you. And also with you, I'm Ed Sims. I'm a member of the trustees and also I'm in the praise band and uh, peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, we're the San Diego's. My name is Albert. And I'm Allison. I serve on the trustee committee and I'm one of the Wesley Ringers. Peace, peace be, be with you. you. Good morning. I'm Janet Schmidt, the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please stand and join us in our opening hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. <laughs> Danger into 
Zephyr Sunday School class. I'm going to start with the prayer today. Loving God, speak to us today, for your people are listening. Spirit of creation and renewal, hover over and around this worship today as you hovered over creation on that first day. Enter into our hearts and in our lives, as you did on the day of our baptism. Descend upon us like a dove, as you did on Jesus' day of baptism, that we may hear again your words of love and adoption. Speak from the heavens into our hearts and minds, that we may perceive your words of guidance and wisdom. Amen. During this new year, we're going to have some wonderful special witnesses from folks in our church family about their deepest hopes for 2021. Today, that witness is brought to us by Alan Griffey. Hi, I'm Alan Griffey. I sing in the praise band here at DAUMC, and I'm co-chair of our welcome and inclusion team. My deepest hope for my church this year is that we help ensure that none of God's children are excluded from God's grace. 2021 will be a decisive year for the United Methodist Church. The postponed 2020 General Conference will, perhaps, settle the issue of how our denomination will treat people created in God's image. I am proud that we here at DAUMC have always welcomed and embraced all people, regardless of age, race, economic status, social status, sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. My hope is that we will strengthen our resolve this year to take a stand for right. It's difficult to have any hope right now. As a nation, we have become more deeply divided than ever. I am actually recording this video on a day when armed domestic terrorists stormed the U.S. Capitol. It would be easy to lose all hope at a time like this. But I know the hearts of our congregation, our DAUMC family, and those hearts are full of compassion, peace, and Christ-like love for all people. That is why I can have hope for 2021. You know what time it is. It's time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are with us to get in close to their devices and screens so they can see everything with small talk. This wonderful time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get in close for small talk. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Got the joy, joy, joy. God! Go away. Go away. Stupid. Go away. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. Um, Lon, what are you, what, what, what are you doing? I was... I was singing in the shower, <laughs> kind of a joke. I'm not really showering. A little more wet than I thought I'd get. But today, we are talking about baptism. And water goes with baptism, right, Lon? Mm-hmm. So, we are gonna talk in the sermon about John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. John the Baptist was baptizing a lot of people and Jesus came to be baptized. Did you know that, Lud? And John the Baptist was kind of nervous. He knew Jesus was the Holy One. But he baptized Jesus. And baptizing is about washing our sins away. 
And most of you, if you were baptized here at Douglas, we used, we have our baptismal font, and we used water. Okay? Some churches will use what they call holy water. Some churches, you will go all the way under the water when you're a little bit older. But at Douglas, we do just a little water on the forehead, just like that. So today, I would like you to think about if you've been baptized, and maybe you probably don't remember if you were baptized as a baby, ask a grown-up who was maybe there about your baptism and remember it, okay? So, next time you take a shower, think about your baptism and maybe sing a little song while you're doing it. Bye, guys. Really? Hello, I'm Sue McNaught. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I'm going to do a reading. Our reading from the Bible is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and honey. He announced, one stronger than I is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open, and the Spirit like a dove coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen.
as I've been praying with our Bible reading this week about Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River, it's been making me think about my own baptism and remembering that. You may or may not be baptized, and you may or may not have been old enough to remember your baptism. People are baptized in many different ways and in lots of different churches. As a baby or young child or youth or adult, with water sprinkled or poured or being fully immersed under the water. It's all good, and it's all God's grace freely given that can never be taken away. I remember my baptism. It was Easter Sunday in the mid-1970s at Pecan Springs Christian Church in Austin, Texas. I'd been in preparation, kind of like a confirmation class in something called the pastor's class. And on Palm Sunday, I stood before my church family and confessed Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and said I wanted to be baptized. And then I was baptized on the following Easter Sunday. Even at that young age when I was baptized, I had very few years of living under my belt. I still had a very clear sense that when I came out of the water, something was different about me. Even then, I understood at some level that I was claimed by Jesus, that I was beloved, that I had entered a new life in Jesus Christ somehow, that I belonged to him. I must say that many, many decades later, the love and the acceptance experienced in my baptism have been a powerful touchstone for me, and I've needed it. God knows I've needed it. I've needed it when I have turned away from God. I've needed it when I've embraced ego or hatred or disinterest or hopelessness. I've needed the touchstone of my baptism in the living of these days. I've needed the touchstone of my baptism through the past week. My baptism has called me to remember who I am and who all people are created in God's image, precious and beloved, and to remember who everyone really belongs to, no matter what they have done. And that is God. Not as an excuse or an easy pass without responsibility, but to remember that each and every person is God's precious, beloved child, no matter how broken, sinful, or lost they may seem. I think that as human beings, we very often seek approval, acceptance, validation from parents or spouse, employer, siblings, children or particular kids at school or friends or people we thought were our friends or from a political identification or political leaders. For many of us, no small part of our self-worth is tied up in how other people see us or if they will accept us and include us. I think this is one of the biggest reasons that our Bible story about Jesus' baptism is so important to us and to all people. John the baptizer, who's Jesus' cousin, is out in the wilderness performing an ancient Jewish rite called the baptism for the repentance of the forgiveness of sins. All kinds of folks were coming out to see him, and while he was baptizing people, John was proclaiming that someone else was coming, more powerful than him, who would baptize with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus shows up in the wilderness at John's baptizing spot, the one who John has been saying is coming, and John baptizes Jesus. We hear that God's Spirit, looking like a dove, descends upon Jesus, and God's voice is heard proclaiming to all, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. My beloved, with whom I am well pleased. You know, this is the only time in the Bible that we hear from God about being pleased with Jesus. Isn't that interesting? This is it. And perhaps what is most striking about this is that, you know, Jesus hasn't done anything yet. In the beginning of the Gospels of Luke and Matthew, we've heard how Jesus has been born, visited by the Magi, been to Egypt, and come back to Nazareth as a small child. The only story we have about his childhood is in Luke when he disobeys his parents. 
The Gospel of Mark, which Sue read from today, doesn't include any of those stories. It starts with a quote from the prophet Isaiah about one crying out in the wilderness and jumps right into the story of John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness and baptizing. Then the adult Jesus shows up right there by the Jordan River at his cousin's baptizing spot. He is baptized and receives this powerful affirmation of God. You are my beloved son and I am so pleased with you. So it seems like the way to get God's seal of approval is to be born, disobey your parents, and go visit your cousin at least once. No, that's not what this is about. What God and Jesus are showing us here is that it is not what you do that somehow wins you God's approval. God's approval is because of who you are. And who you already are is God's beloved child. God's beloved child. Whether you are baptized or not, whether you're a church member or not, whoever you are, in whatever state you are in, you are God's beloved child. We have a fancy word for this. It's called grace. We use it to describe a love that is not earned by the behavior of the one who is loved. Rather, grace is that love which is all about the one who loves rather than the one who is loved. Let me say that one more time. Grace is all about the one who loves rather than the one who is loved. You are a beloved child of God because God loves you, not because you've done lovable things. This is the very foundation of Christian welcome found in baptism, found in our Methodist way of being Christian, and at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Grace, God's loving grace. Many people try to set some minimum standard of goodness or some minimum standard of knowledge and right beliefs as an entrance into God's love and into God's church. Do this and you will be beloved of God. Believe this and you can be part of this church. Think this way and that's the Christian way. But that's not what we find here today in the Bible with Jesus, with God. What we find here is that there are no minimum requirements to be loved by God. None at all. Not age or wisdom, right behavior or even intention of right behavior, or saying some special formula or words of a prayer that magically makes God love you and show up for you. As a matter of fact, God already loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. But what you can do is choose whether or not you are going to live into this incredible grace and love that God already gives us. That those of us who are baptized have said yes to through the sacrament of baptism. What I mean is this. Here we have this powerful, affirming story of Jesus' baptism that also tells us about our own baptisms and who we are. We are beloved and claimed and we belong. Now, it may seem kind of obvious, but Jesus doesn't just come out of the water, receive this incredible affirmation of who he is, and then just walk away feeling good and loved and affirmed. Jesus goes out from his baptism and chooses to live into it. He chooses to go ahead and do what he has been called to do, heal and teach, proclaim and show God's justice and righteousness, to redeem the world and to usher in God's coming kingdom. Jesus comes away from his baptism claimed by God and claiming the ministry that God has set him to do. As Jesus' people, he calls us to do the same. God loves and claims each and every one of us, and Jesus calls us to follow him and to live as his beloved people, worshiping, learning, growing, healing, teaching, serving, giving. We love and follow Jesus by doing the kinds of things Jesus did. It doesn't matter how young or old you are when you are baptized. It doesn't matter which church you are 
a member of or not a member of. It, if you are baptized, then excellent. Live into that. If you want to be baptized, by all means, get in contact with us here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church because we would love to help you claim God's love of you through that sacrament. But know that here today, the most important thing for you is to know and remember that you are already claimed by God. That you can claim for you through Jesus Christ, no matter what. You can claim that. That you can always have a home in Jesus' church, right here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. That you remember that you can choose to live into God's claim on your life, believing, loving, and following Jesus, living into the ministries that God prepares for you because you are already beloved. You are God's, you are unique, you are necessary, and we love you too. Praise God. Amen. Good morning. I'm Janet Smith, the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join me in singing Spirit Song. water blessing prayers and prayers of the people and so if you haven't already done so we invite you to get your bowl of water your piece of paper your pen or pencil or crayon whatever you're using if you printed out the dove that we included in the douglas avenue e-news then have that cut out and ready uh, for this special time of prayer i'm joined here by the wonderful nancy vereen Good morning, everyone. I'm Nancy Vereen. I'm the lay leader at Douglas Avenue Methodist Church. I'm a longtime member, member of the Chancel Choir when we actually are in service, and a Compass volunteer, and many, many other things. So it's nice to be here. We heard in our Bible reading and in our worship today how much God loves each and every person. How, like Jesus, we are beloved, and God is proud of us that each one of us is unique and necessary. So please join with us in this special water blessing prayer to remind us of our connection with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So get your pen and your paper or your cut out piece of dove, your dove there. And now take a moment to think about how God is proud of you for being you you, your unique self. What makes you, you? Maybe it's things you like to do or favorite foods or talents 
or how you express yourself, your smile, your laugh, the special way you care for others, anything at all about yourself. Go ahead now and write or draw a few of those things on your piece of paper or on your cutout dub. Now think about the people in your life who make you feel loved and connected to God. This could be the people in your family, friends, pastors, teachers, or anyone who helps you feel God's love. Go ahead and write or draw those people on your piece of paper. Now I invite you to take your piece of paper and with the writing side up facing you, place it on the water. And now put your hand in the water and swirl it around. You can watch as your paper moves. Maybe it changes in the water, it may sink, it may break apart, it may even dissolve a little bit and all that's okay. It's becoming a part of the water, just like how all the great things about you and those people of love in your life connect you with God. Keep swirling the water in your bowl and pray with me. Loving God, we know that you are always with us. We know you always love us. Help us notice people and things in our lives that connect us with you. Help us to love and follow Jesus. Help us to live that love in all that we do every day. Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to take your hand out of the water and touch it to your forehead. Touch it to your heart. And as you feel the water on your skin, remember that God and your church family love you. If you've been baptized, take a moment to remember your baptism with thanksgiving. In the mystery and joy of your baptism, whatever your age or wherever that sacrament was given to you, you were and are claimed by God and gifted with the Holy Spirit. Even when you may turn away from that, God never turns away from you. You are loved. You are claimed. You are beloved. Please join with us as we continue in prayer. Loving God, we are thankful that you call each one of us by name, that each person is your beloved, that you never leave us, even when we turn away from you. Speak to each one from that truth of who you are and who we are. Help each one to hear your voice clearly and to follow you. Holy God, we come to you today full of emotions after a week full of fear, frustration, anger, worry, and hope for our future. The list could go on and on. So we pray to you and ask for your guidance. We pray for our country as we work through the aftermath of the assault on our nation's capital. Take away the lies, the arrogance, and hatred that infect our hearts. Turn our anger into committed action to be a people who seek your justice, your peace, and are overwhelmingly focused on the common good. Envelop us in that common wealth of love right now. We pray for the five people who died in the assault on our capital. In the midst of shock and grief, bring comfort to family and friends and lead us away from paths of destruction and death. We pray for all who suffer with coronavirus and complications, for our community where infections continue to spread, and for our state, nation, and world experiencing an increase in infections and deaths. We are grateful for the advent of vaccines and pray for the safe, swift, and equitable distribution of this help. We pray for all who are seeking your healing in body, mind, spirit, and relationship, that they may receive healing, help, and hope. 
We thank you for the many blessings and celebrations of our lives, for love and joy shared, birthdays and anniversaries recognized, for the way we experience connections and help and love, even as we remain physically distant. As we journey into this new year, give us the compassion to live into the light and goodness for which you have created all people. And when all else fails, bring us back to love. Bring our hearts and our hands, our dreams and our hopes, our anger and our frustration, our hurt and our fear, all back to love. With hope we pray, with hope we are sustained, and in hope we share together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, praying together aloud the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for your generous outpouring of financial gifts to support the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Those financial gifts make all of the ministries that we do together possible from online worship and small groups to prayer, to service in the community, to reaching out with love and healing all over the place. Uh, we want to encourage you to continue to give. You can do that by using our online giving portal. The link for that is right in the comment section. You can also uh, access it right off of our web page. You can set up automatic giving with your financial institution or with ours. If you need help with that, just call us in the church office. And of course, you can send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in the church office. Thank you for that continued giving. We've had a wonderful outpouring of giving for our Christmas mission offering, and we're going to receive a special witness right now and a thank you from our mission committee. Good morning, Douglas Avenue family. I'm Sue Zeller speaking on behalf of the Mission Committee today. As you know, the Mission Committee selected two programs to be the recipients of the Douglas Avenue 2020 Christmas offering. The Chattop Children's Home Santa Express program is one of those. They are located in Quincy, Illinois, founded in 1853 and was established as the Ministry of the United Methodist Church. Douglas Avenue has a history of supporting Chaddock, an internationally recognized leader in the treatment of children suffering from the psychological, emotional, and spiritual effects of significant abuse, neglect, and trauma. The Santa Express program specifically provides Christmas presents for the children under their care during the holiday season. The other program that was chosen was Helping Hands of Springfield which was established in 1989 and is a local organization working with people experiencing homelessness in our community. Douglas Avenue supports the efforts of Helping Hands to accomplish their missions in our area. From July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020, approximately 332 individuals use the Helping Hands Emergency Shelter. Having said all that, the mission committee thanks you our Douglas Avenue family for your generous giving to the Christmas offering. You donated a total of $4,400. Thank you so very much. And through your generosity, know that God is working through each of you. Watch him work. Good morning. Please join us in singing Grace Like Rain.
for joining in online worship with the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this special Sunday. We love you and are just so honored that you join with us today for online worship. We hope that this experience has been meaningful for you, that you are blessed by it, that you come away knowing that you are beloved and precious, and that you will join with us again very soon for online worship. Please do use that contact form if you have not already done so, that, so that we can connect with you and get you connected in to so many different ways to love and to serve and to be in small groups and in prayer and all of those things. As you go into your day, Go knowing that you are that precious, beloved child of God, that Jesus loves you and calls you forward in ministry and service, and that the Holy Spirit empowers you each and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Amen.